All right, YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down the last round of the Invasion Control, the round five offense that we ended up winning to win COD Champs. I kind of wanted to take a deeper look specifically at this round because it was the last round of the entire tournament. And obviously, uh, you know, we were always a pretty decent Invasion Control team and specifically on that offensive side compared to other teams. So uh, I really wanted to break it down because it was fitting that we ended off the tournament uh, with a win on this round. So... To start off, obviously we're on offense round five, meaning most of the time you're going to have to guarantee both points uh, when you're winning the offensive rounds on invasion because usually you're not able to have enough time to win off of lives on offense on this map. So in this specific uh, round, we wanted to guarantee B as fast as possible. Sometimes you'll see A breaks or you know B down break, kind of giving you the option to go A, uh, but they figured they wanted to do just you know guarantee B, make sure that we have as much time and as many lives as possible going into. Uh, you know the rest of the round once we have actually captured b and can move on towards a so uh, we send three people basically towards a the point they throw their nades and then we have ag uh, basically next is blue dump watching uh, basically all of this mid cut area to make sure that uh, our flank is covered and our mid cut is covered uh, for anyone that might be on point so all they have to do is basically look forward and just focus on anything that's in front of them so uh, big thing big thing here off this break uh, I believe AG actually dies to Paco here. Uh, I think if he would have played, you know, this corner to the right um, and, you know, watched this angle, it probably wouldn't have been an easier gunfight for him. Um, you know, but in hindsight, you know, Paco does snap on him and is able to win this gunfight. Um, but th it is important for us because we do get uh, kills towards the front side. And a big thing for Ann here is he's able to jump out of this broken, get to the top treehouse with his life, and then get to top blue. And that was, you know, something that he was really, really good at uh, throughout the entirety of the year of, you know, getting towards that B site, but actually pushing through and getting lost towards their base. So, you know, Paco doesn't end up pushing through this mid cut. He actually wraps around back towards the treehouse to help his team on this side uh, but what he could have done he could have done you know a, a mid cut flank or a you know a full flank for himself but it would have been such an easy read for us because uh, we knew that you know he got a kill there so obviously we had eyes on it uh, so he chooses to wrap back obviously skies who was their you know a sided player is now rotating towards this mid side because he didn't see anything a um, so he's, you know, just filling in that position that Paco was basically covering in the first place. So uh, it was kind of a decent break out of us. You know, there was trade off of kills, but Ant is able to get to this top blue area, which is such a powerful position, especially for someone like him who can finesse his life around this area and just, you know, get a kill, get away, get as much info on anyone trying to get to this B point uh, and try and, you know, stop us from capping this. So he has all this information. Obviously, we aren't capping just at the moment because it would just be a one-on-one -on -one, and a lot of times teams will just push up a little bit just to get that space and try and guarantee some kills so people off of spawn could go and get that, uh, you know, B point for them. Big thing here is... We're able to get this information that these people are coming towards this treehouse. We try and play for him. It gets traded. Ken has actually bumped off the point just because he knows that, you know, if he's solo on point, they're probably just going to try and run at him. So he goes to, towards the DVDs, try and cut there, get another kill. Uh, but he doesn't get a kill. He is able to, you know, back up and try and get uh, Brandon's trade over here. He backs up to the point. Now they have Skies who is over towards the A site. He's now pinching this mid cut to try and get you know ken off the point but what do you know you have ag coming off the spawn covering the mid cut for him as well as ant who's also watching uh for you know ken's back as he's turning to look towards mid cut and dvd so shotzi has this you know ability to make sure not only that he's getting these spawn kills but also can look back at the point in case anyone has got through towards this treehouse side he's able to get the kill on kismet so that's three down big three down for us so 28 to 25 lives this is a situation where uh you know some teams will be willing to double stack some teams will be willing to play the kills um, I think we figured here that, you know, Anna is already out towards blue, that we can, you know, push at least someone out towards this uh, DVD point because we've gotten all the kills. We know all of them are accounted for. And, you know, at this point, AG is now DVD and he can try and get our mid cut uh, for us if he wants to do that as well. And we also have Brandon, who's also taking this route to go at least towards the A side, knowing that we have all of these kills. If he can get towards the A side and, and at least stay alive, uh, around this, you know, Lamar Street, you can really help your team transition two way from the B cap because you've already have this position up towards the street. You know, a lot of teams you'll see if they're chalking up this B point, they don't want to hit anymore. They'll send people up towards the street, start playing what we would call Nero or start playing this AS and D area and try and get pressure up towards the street. So in case any team that wanted to go A, they had to either get through them first or they had to take the longer route through blue and then eventually, you know, 
meet up, try and cross to the point, but they would still have to get some sort of, you know, area over here to make sure that they can't get crossed over onto the point and get killed from anyone that is still staying alive over here because they technically can just, you know, look backwards and find you on the point. So making sure that you get all this space over here was a big thing for a lot of teams in defense. So having this initial break off win for us and starting to get these ticks and also having this, you know, starting to get this a control over here is really, really big for the offensive team. And, you know, Ant is still staying alive here at top blue. He's, and, you know, he's finally traded out, but you know, at what cost, you know, we're already stacking all of this. AG has got this kill mid cut and now he's going to go back towards uh, the point to help him stack because we know our front is already compromised because Ant is calling it out. He just died to a guy who was top blue. So AG knows he needs to go get back onto this point to help Ken out to guarantee this point and meanwhile while that's happening this is a, this is a huge timing over here Brandon is already pushed towards this a street and he gets a really good timing with Paco because instead of Paco you know holding this angle the entire time to make sure that no one's coming towards a side he goes into cafe and then tries to go AS and D to cover it but during that timing uh, of when he could have gotten that that first cut over here towards the fire car so like this timing over here that's when uh, Brandon is able to get through the street and get towards the A point. And the biggest thing for this is, you know, we're already having good position towards this B side. And, and now Brandon is now going to basically make them tweak, make them have to go back and get towards uh, the A point because they know it's basically almost chalk for this B point. And, and Brandon is already towards A point. He's dragging these people off of spawn. You see Dante and you'll probably see Skies as well get towards this A point because they know they need to clear him because any you know free ticks that Brandon's able to get is just gonna be even more detrimental for the defensive side. So uh, they kind of have to determine what they wanna do. And it looks like you know seven and eight are going to uh, try and get these people off of B point. They know they're still too alive towards there. And five and six are gonna try and focus uh, you know Brandon over towards his A point. Brandon chows off the point and, and you know Dante's not expecting the rechow and huge kill by Brandon because it stalls even more time and both these guys on the New York squad they're looking to retake through this middle cut uh, they're actually going to both hit it so instead of you know splitting off or going both their side they both hit towards the mid cut this is big for AG because he is watching it from the point he gets one kill he gets straight out but now uh, we know the positioning of the last guy we know that he can either be mid cut or or he's wrapping back towards DVDs. And that's the information that we get from, from Ant. So Ant can see this guy wrap back towards DVDs. So Ken doesn't have to really watch it anymore. Um, and, and now we can just focus on our front. We finally get the kill on Kiz. Now we can fully guarantee the B cap. Unfortunately, we didn't get a tick on the A side. Uh, that was Brandon who was trying to find a one on one uh, with Skies. Unfortunately, he doesn't win that. But the D was done by Brandon. He drew, you know, Caesar and Dante both away from B so we can guarantee that B point. So that we can guarantee that B point. That was basically just a bait for us. And now with this, we get the B cap. Now we're up six lives. So this is a great position to be in, uh, especially when the defense doesn't have this A street control yet uh, and they just have to, you know, defend A alone. So the big thing for us is, you know, we want to make sure we get off of this point and start taking that, you know, control away from them because, you know, we knew that they could possibly wrap up to here. So we're just cutting off the possibilities. We know we can go, you know, AS and D, we can go up the street now because we know no one has got to this position already. Uh, so that was big for us because as long as you can stunt them from getting up onto that street, you can create a lot of pressure on the offensive side, especially, you know, after you've captured this B point. So we don't have to worry about the B point anymore. Now we can just kind of play for kills. And, you know, especially in this scenario, you know, they don't even have their blue control anymore because Kenny got this kill. They are so confined to this one specific area with uh, Cafe and Mannequin that, you know, they're going to be spawning gas if they die. And it's a really confined area to be in. And when you're there and when we're coming off from all sides off of this B point, it's very, very hard as a defensive team to kind of play turtle like this because, you know, you're just confined. It's not even like they're trying to play turtle. It's just that we've confined them so hard because of the way we've started this round. And the big thing for here is, you know, and has now gone into their mannequin. Uh, he can now start getting pressure towards, you know, the A point as well. Ken gets another kill on Dante over here. You know, it it's all gets traded out, but, you know, and gets another kill. So we get two kills. Uh, towards this front cafe slash mannequin side there's only one guy left alive and can now start getting towards uh, their base and you know you can say that he could have gone to the a cap and and tried to double cap this with brandon but uh you know if he wins this gunfight on kids it's probably basically over at that point anyways so 
he gets the you know kids weak over here unfortunately he doesn't win the gunfight and this is a chance for them to start you know gaining some momentum here so once ant loses this gunfight the big thing for us now is to have ag stay alive he needs to be able to hold this cross and hold the positioning cafe for us to get back into the fight because if they can retake cafe that's an opportunity for them to also you know retake as and d retake the point and then get started to push up uh towards this a street so if he can maintain this control over cafe and get brandon's cross for you know and as many amount of kills as he can uh it's great so ag he does get the paco kill here i believe he also gets the information on kids crossing the point here so you know brandon's getting stunned and he's getting tacked out so he has to play his life he actually doesn't get a kill on kismet here i believe uh you know his bullets just aren't going through the wall now kismet wastes four skies here to double shot on the point again big thing for us brandon was staying alive on point meaning he was dragging two people away from getting positioning towards mannequin towards cafe up the street so they needed to clear him first and what that does is it buys time for the guys off spawn you know we're spawning you know either back ice cream back uh palace whatever and we're trying to flood over and regain that position that we lost in the previous gunfight so the big thing and i've always talked about this is if they can just resettle all of this positioning towards the cafe and towards this mannequin area they can basically rebound the round and put us back in that you know defensive trap that you always see but you know it is going to take like two waves for them specifically in this position so we just need to continue the pressure on make sure that we're constantly trading getting in those gunfights and not letting them get pushed up at all here if we can and you know at this point 22 to 15 15 we just need to trade together we just need to keep that pressure going on this a street and you know they're able to get the a kill on a brandon but again they're still tight in their base ken has already moved towards this mannequin area he sees paco at the top gas he gets that kill meanwhile Ant and ag are already working toward this cafe area Ant gets a kill in cafe ag also gets a kill on one of the guys that was was you know wrapped back for brandon on point now it's a, a three down once ken gets this kill and last guy on point is skies he's by the point he gets one kill but it gets traded out right away at this moment 21 11 we're about to double stack on point they're spawning gas i think we won the round I, uh, I'm starting to stand up because I'm thinking we won the ground, but the, the big thing here is they do still spawn close. You know, if they had spawned blue, it would have been round win over already for sure because, you know, number four wouldn't be able to get that cross. But because they spawn gas, they still have the ability to get to the point um, in time for, for Brandon to get this cross or at least get pressure up to Mannequin and at least contest him over here. So that's what ends up happening. Uh, and that's why we end up not winning this round uh, right away. So we are double stacking the point. We do have trophies, but Brandon still has to go off spawn and get this cross for his team. He does get one with Kiz and makes Paco weak. And because Dante is over here to contest this with Brandon because he took the laundry route, he's able to stop our teammates from watching the cross to point. Now he's also breaking from the other side. So the two guys on point have to worry about both sides because, you know, AG is still B-Dom. If he goes over here and watches the cross, he doesn't have the entirety of the cross for where Dante uh, ends up being at. And I believe he pushes up towards you know at the front of this fire car and you know yeah see ag is not able to win this gunfight and uh you know once he starts shooting dante is able to turn and kill him for that so you know it was just a kind of a mix of the situation of how uh they were able to contest this cross because dante is able to win this gunfight off of brandon he's able to get the control of this other side of the point trying to break on in and because Ann is you know on the point he is focused on team shotting this with ken you know their side but he doesn't realize obviously dante won the gunfight on our cross guys so uh, they're breaking from both sides and that's how they end up breaking the point right here and so it was very very close but again we still have a minute 30 to work with it's still 17 and 9 but this allows them to start getting some movement on the map and, and some upward pressure on the map as a defensive side you see dante he's starting to go instantly to you know what we would call nero they're already getting our cafe control they're already getting as and d control and they're playing uh this little credit over here towards the blue side in case we want to take the deeper route so this is a great rebound by new york once they get that four down they get the pressure and this is what i was talking about this is what's scary about the defensive side you get that one four down and uh you can just get an initial positioning up here on the street and making sure that these guys even though we have an eight live lead it, it can get really sketchy so you know at this point me and damon are in the back and we're just you know praying that they just listen to each other and go somewhere together if you just trade them out you just you know bang something out together 
uh, take one part of the map. Uh, you can just, you know, teamwork out of this situation, especially with 17 and 9 lives. So we do get a kill at the Nero position, but we do die towards the mid tank and we also die to the Kreddy towards blue. And again, you know, they are able to start getting this, this mid pressure. They are picking up the right side. You know, Skies is picking up the left side. He can go back towards the Nero area. And it, it's really important for us to just take one side of the map. And, you know, at this point, we do end up getting the kills on seven and eight. That's that's Kiz and Hydra. And we're starting to we're starting to hit this left side of the map. Uh, the big thing for us is we haven't cleared our ASD yet, so that's where we've got to clear. We haven't cleared our cafe yet. We haven't cleared our Nero. So that's the like next basically the next three steps unless we want to go fully around blue but i think for our players with the two ticks and with the live lead that we have 12 to 6 they kind of wanted to just you know group up together and just go you know cut to the point as fast as possible so i don't believe we know that skies has actually got to this uh nero area i think ant literally just nades this in the possibility that he can be there we check our patio we check our as and d we know that they're not towards this area so the only areas that they can be are nero and cafe because we haven't cleared cafe yet and they're at this top dark area of the cafe so it's a pretty hard clear for anyone trying to retake cafe from the offensive side big kill here by ant he nades the car gets the car explosion for skies and that's a huge kill because once we know that this guy had pushed out over to here and is killed we know everyone is in front of us at this point all we need to do is clear cafe now and now we can just rush to the point cross over here and try and you know get this last few kills for the stack so big thing here Brandon wins a one-on-one -on, -one on the point. He just instantly goes to the point because he knows that there's only, you know, two left alive on the, the defensive side. And, you know, most likely one at least was at the cafe. So he chows the point, gets his kill on Kismet. We know that we still haven't cleared cafe. So that's what Ken's doing. He's making sure that he has the, the cafe and, you know, the deep cross as well as Ant. He's holding the, the deeper cross too. So rewatching now, I don't think Ken was actually expecting this guy to, to come out of the cafe like this. Uh, but regardless, you know, he does lose gunfight, but it gets instantly traded out by Ant. That's fine. If we're getting the trades, it really doesn't matter. And then AG here, he's going to be pushing their base. We know it's 11 to 4 as well. So you might as well take those chows while you say, still have like one or two people on the point. That's what's going to happen here. AG is taking these chows. He knows he's winning these gunfights. And if he wins these gunfights, we just win the round outright gets the kill on Skies. Once he gets the kill on Paco, he basically just win. Now, you know, Brendan is still on point capping. Ant's going to go towards the point with him. Age is just going to pre-fire in case this guy spawned out blue and is going here. We win the round. We win COD champs. And it was just an awesome moment. Uh, really fitting that we won on an offensive invasion control round because we were pretty good at that in the entirety of the year. And it was always the most one-sided a round of all the controls you know it's always defensively sided for invasion but we're always good at that you know transitioning to a after we've capped b but it was awesome you know proud moment for all of us they they turned up when they needed to in that round five appreciate you guys watching this and hope you guys enjoy the breakdown i'll see you guys in the next one